proclaim the salvation of God day by day, tell among the nations his glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Bartholomew the Apostle, and our intentions for Mass are for the needs of Holy Mother Church and the suffering world, for Ivor Hellenberg on his birthday, for those recommended to our prayers, for Joubert and Cynthia Navarro, uh, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners, and for the reign of God's kingdom on earth. And so to prepare our hearts to worthily celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and our need for God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthen in us, O Lord, the faith by which the blessed Apostle St. Bartholomew clung wholeheartedly to your Son, and grant that, through the help of his prayers, your Church may become, for all the nations, the sacrament of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. An angel spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And in the spirit, he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, having the glory of God its radiance like a most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and on the gates the names of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south, three gates, and on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, 
and on them the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your saints, O Lord, make known the glory of your reign. Your, your saints, saints, O Lord, Lord make, make known the glory of your Lord. reign. All your works shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your reign and declare your mighty deeds. Your, your saints, O Lord, make known the glory of your reign to make known your might to the children of men and the glorious splendor of your reign. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your rule endures for all generations. Your saints, O Lord, make known the glorious your reign. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call Him, who call on Him in truth. Your saints, O Lord, make known the glory of Your reign. Alleluia. Alleluia. Rabbi, You are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law, uh, uh, of him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see the heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. We know very little about the Apostle Bartholomew, uh, apart from the confusion that, and this also goes to the fact we know so little about him, the confusion in John's Gospel where he is called Nathaniel. Um, there's a possibility that, like so many of them, he had a, a Greek name and a, a Jewish name, um, still a common thing in the world today even in Africa where people have more than one name um, and use the names interchangeably. Tradition tells us that um, there is, is a story from Eusebius, in fact, that uh, uh, Bartholomew went to India, but um, it does seem quite strong that he worked in uh, what is now Albania and, and that area. And he was martyred there, uh, reportedly in the very gruesome way that the Persians martyred people by uh, skinning alive. And his bones were buried in, uh, uh, or his relics are, in an island in the Tiber River. Now that island, uh, because it was separated from the city, became a really good place to have a hospital, really 
early people, we think of people being not so sophisticated, but the middle, people in the Middle Ages knew that if people were sick, you had to keep them separated so they didn't pass on their infections. So an island in the middle of a river is a great place to have a hospital. And so there is the hospital of St. Bartholomew. Um, and so he became the patron saint of healthcare workers, doctors, and hospitals. Um, so the great St. Bartholomew's Hospital in London is, has the same origin. It was run by the Augustinians. That hospital has interesting um, uh, sideline in history. As you know, in Holland, the bishops stood up and said, nobody will take our Jews, prompted, well, no, uh, not so much prompted, but they got uh, St. Titus Bransma to write the letter for them. And 80% of all the Jews in uh, Holland, because the Nazis decided to uh, uh, retaliate uh, against this, uh, uh, sort of standing up of the bishops, 80% of all the Jews of Holland were deported and all killed. In Italy, they operated differently. They, on the face, they said, oh yes, yes, we fully understand and we will cooperate. On the surface, they didn't cause any problems, the Nazis. Underground, they ran the, all this underground network. And so they saved 80% of their Jews. So the Dutch lost 80% and the Italians saved 80%. And one of the places they saved them was in the hospital in the middle of the Tiber. They did so by telling the Germans that there was this deadly disease that they couldn't cure and the whole hospital wing had to be uh, isolated. And there was no cure for it and it was deadly. So nobody came near the hospital. It was a very clever move on their part. What do we learn from Nathaniel or Bartholomew? Well, in the gospel today, there's this wonderful passage. Jesus says of Nathaniel, behold, an Israelite indeed, one in whom there is no guile. Now, guilelessness is a great virtue to have. That is to use computer speak, to be WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. There is no, um, uh, hidden agendas. Bartholomew was just himself. There was no um, uh, agendas. There was nothing hidden. There was nothing. When he said one thing, you knew he actually meant that. You could understand what he said. You wouldn't be thinking to yourself, what did he mean by that? I wonder what he's thinking. He was just himself. And that's a tremendous virtue, which comes from being uh, completely rooted in God, knowing that you are who you are and who you are is good enough because God loves you like that. But there's a further thing in this which we don't notice, perhaps. Uh, Jesus says to, to him, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. And he responds, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Why? Well, if you think back a little bit. Um, Psalm uh, 138. I knew, before you were born, I knew you. You know my rising, my sitting. You know my thoughts from afar. Nothing is hidden from you. Even when I was being knit together in my mother's womb, you knew me. So this saying of Jesus, before you came, I saw you under the tree, sets off something in Bartholomew's heart and Bartholomew's mind. And he recognizes that he's been known by Christ. Perhaps that's something we can reflect on, Psalm 138, 139 with it. We are known as we are and we are loved. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we celebrate anew the feast day of St. Bartholomew, O Lord, we pray that we may obtain your help through the intercession of the Apostle in whose honour we bring you this sacrifice of praise, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Stephen our Bishop, Sylvester his auxiliary, and all your clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles, with St. Bartholomew and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we, called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I confer a kingdom upon you, just as my Father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, says the Lord. Let us pray. As we celebrate the feast day of the blessed Apostle Bartholomew, we have received the pledge of eternal salvation, O Lord, and we pray that it may be of help to us, both now and for the life to come, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen.